Okay, I think I might know what stairway it is. The worst part is, I think I told you to ignore it. Or no, I told you to either go down it or go forward. Keep going back. Not very wizard came back. At least this room's tolerable. As long as they don't come at you. <laughs> Secret Nines dance warping! We're so good at this. Ow! Hey, you killed my partner! We're I good. killed you too. We all have more red potion. We really need to go out and get one later on. Oh, God! Oh, shoot, you only got two bombs left. Yeah, I just realized. Phew. I've been right. pretty liberal with bombs. Use your freaking wand! <laughs> Light the room up. Oh, thank God. Great, now I have health. Yeah, that's the thing that kind of stinks about this dungeon. At least they don't have the dongos. The only thing you need bombs for are blowing up paths. But thankfully, we opened up everything we need to do. I think. Well, Unless we need to open up another path where the silver arrows well, are. Well, I have the bombs for just in case. Okay, yeah, I think you want to go south from here. Hey, There's another thing. stairway that... I guess we should have gone down that stairway. I think that might lead us. Basically, if you get towards the upper left corner, you're in the right spot. Whatever stairway gets you to the upper right corner, left corner, upper left corner, that is where the silver arrow is. I want to say it's the one south from here. Okay, so... In case you drop anything... So, go up. I was saying go down. Oh. No. Well, you guys can kill these guys if you're here. Since I can't get out. This place fucking sucks! This place is the worst! Yep. Welcome to hell. Oh, I can't get back out. Great. Oh, so we gotta go north. Well, fuck. Not dealing with any of you. Kiss my ass. I'm out of here. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I gotta see exactly where you are, how the doors work. Cause this dungeon would be a freaking nightmare for figuring out where to go. Let's see, okay, you're there. Alright. Uh... Oh shit. I'm just trying to see where to go, and it doesn't look like a very easy path. I guess I took the wrong way, right? I guess that's what happened. Fuck! Mm. I am close to getting a red potion, in spite of it all, though. Yep. Well, kill these enemies to get bombs. Which we can definitely use right now. Oh, I think we get some invisibility frames yourself if you manage to hit them. And a fairy! Hey, any healer we can get, take it. Well, I'm in a more stable position. Definitely a lot better than it was. Oh, heart! The miracle. Miracle of life! Now then. Oh no, I'm wasting so many keys. Wait, this key is unbreakable. The eyes of the skull have secrets! That's your hint to let you know. A compass. Basically, get to the eyes, you'll discover things. One is the end of the dungeon, the other is the MacGuffin that we need. Yup. Oh, sweet money. Well, I guess I'll take it. Huh. I don't know if I want to go south or east. Yeah, this place is just starting to look like you. I'll head south nightmare. first. Oh, God, we are basically going. I see. The way we have to go through, we're basically going to go backwards in the dungeon. God damn it! God, I hate this place. Fun. Basically, we're gonna go back to where the very first set of stairs we took in this dungeon led us. Hey, more bombs. Well, that's good, because you need to bomb the wall to your right. Yup. Okay. Go bomb this wall, and then go north. And then basically, once you go north, you're right back to where the first stairway led us. Give me my... Look at what that map we've explored, though! No, no! Yeah, just a nice reminder, your wand is still weaker than your sword, so if you hit them with a wand, they will split off. Yeah, so... You won't get item drops that way, almost got either. a decent amount of health. 
Yeah, we could probably survive if we manage to get to where we need to go. Yep. If worse comes to worse, if I do die, then I at least have money for potions. Yep. And since we have the red mail, it'll be a lot easier to survive now. So... Alright, yep, you remember the way. Just gotta go down the stairway here. God damn it. Why do they always have to respawn? I don't need any more bombs, do I, for anything else? Might need one, so don't waste all of them. You might need one more. Possibly two. Let me make sure. I'm trying to see what it says about the route you gotta take. Yeah, one should be fine. Oh! <laughs> Eat it. See, getting the red mail makes this actually tolerable. The enemies actually feel fair. They can't... They... they yeah, they feel fair. Oh my god. See, if you do this out the red mail, you're a monster. You go the whole game with just the green... Yo. I mean, I've seen the man once uh, go through the entire game with three hearts. Which way? I'll go left. It's a room of darkness. You can't light it up. Well, it's just a dark floor room. That's also weird that Level 9 is the only dungeon that has rooms that are just a dark floor. I think it'd be hiding something, but no. Go down that stairway. This one? Yep. That's the one we should have gone down. I didn't realize it at the time. One of the only stairways we haven't gone down yet. Yep, okay, I was right. Alright, just go north from here, and you'll be able to get to where that arrow is. Yep, this is what you need the last bomb for. After this, I don't think we need bombs for anything else. Um, bro, did you really just block the door? Yeah, right, bro. Fucking asshole! Ah, oh, that's where you have to go! No, nope! <laughs> Gotta get through me first! One last room of wizard robes. God damn, the blue is having to get the Oh, this is an awful room for dark for the wizard robes. Yep, yeah, stay in the center. Stay in the center. You do not want to be on the outside. If they catch you out there, you're fucked. In conjunction with the bubbles. Alright! Well, it's the same block you always have to do for this kind of room. Gotta do it from the inside. You can do it from the inside, but it's definitely preferable to do it from the outside. Fuck you. And here it is! Once you get this, your regular arrows will be replaced. Yep. First. Here you go. Our final you. required item of the game. I think, it, I want to say it's called like a holy arrow in Japan. That sounds about right. Considering how taboo that word was back in the 90s, because people wanted to take things out of context so much, or certain words are offensive back in the I mean, day. think of all the power that, that the hero gets from God. <laughs> God gets the hero! You're not wrong! It's also technically goddess? Oh, fuck you. Technicalities. <laughs> but anyways, here we go. Time here to go Alright, so go back the way you came, if you remember where that is. Yeah, I don't think you can use your sword when inside a door. That's also kind of annoying. Yeah. Then you have an ultimate safe space. They can't hit me from in here. Well, good news. Now you can't hit anybody from in there. Yeah, the sad thing is, I would take these dungeons over the freaking Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom dungeons. Like, honestly, it probably is the thing that offends me the most about the latest 3D Solids. Their dungeons are horrible. Yeah. They're so bad. Like, it's literally just explore to get to these areas. Which can be cool, but it doesn't feel like so much of a dungeon as much as it is just complete these puzzles. And so they just can you solve this puzzle for like three or four different areas and that's it. Yeah, and they don't... It's not like you progress in anything. I'm hoping it's just the right way. Hmm. I think this can work? I um, don't think this is the right way. No, you could go back though. I was gonna say, you could go back. Yeah, this is the right way. You're good. Yeah, it's like I don't want to waste any more time. I already took one loop around. Yeah, you could have taken the other way, but you would have you would have needed a bomb, which you have eleven now. So oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if I if, oh, if that was the case, then I'm fucking man. Well, it's whatever. Fuck you. Fuck Give you. me health. Give me bombs. Not that I need bombs anymore. Wee. 
<laughs> Being high for this is so stupid! <laughs> oh my god, he's getting caught running around! Hey, take it! Look, it helps me not die. Yep. At least little slime enemies don't respawn here. Alright, well, now it's straight floor. Now you get the rest of this. Yep. The miracle that is finishing this game yeah, took a little bit thing, longer than I was hoping, but hey. That's the thing that makes me worry of the future of the Zelda series. Like, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom honestly feel like they're both one trick ponies. Like, they're so reliant. I think on the blood. way that Breath of the Wild feels like it's a completely different Zelda that caters to a lot of people that really aren't Zelda fans, and maybe that's just me speaking. Yeah. Because it feels like everyone wants to say that Zelda should have gone this open world uh, path to begin with. If it was more condensed, I probably wouldn't mind it, honestly. Yeah, that's the big thing about it. It's like, I think it's too big of a scale. Mm -hmm. If it was more condensed, it would help give a lot more of these places identity. If you scale identities. it down and give, like, legitimate dungeons again, like, I feel like it'd probably be the best Zelda game. Alright, moment of truth! So, it's time to battle Ganon! Ganon! By the way, he's usually invisible when he flies around the room. Right, before I forget. Let me just get this ready. Yep. So yeah, Ganon is invisible and flies around the room like an asshole. Basically, just keep randomly stabbing and hope you find him. He just flies around randomly. He tends to be where the balls come from, though. But you're better off just randomly stabbing. You'll know you nearly have him once he changes color. Yep. Then you have to stab him four times with a magical sword. So that'd be eight with the white and sixteen with the regular. Once he turns brown, you need a silver arrow to shoot and kill him. And when you do, that's it. Yep, just keep in mind, you become here on the silver arrow and get to that point, you basically gotta get yourself killed. Yeah. So Look at all that said, that let's go home. <laughs> Look at all that blood. Let's go home. Yep. <laughs> we need our mission. Um, hello? <laughs> I need some help here. Oh, God. Huh, neat. I didn't realize that the room was dark like that. Help, I'm trapped by fire! <laughs> <laughs> I will walk through flames for you. You could have just sweat. You know, you could have just destroyed it with a sword. No, thanks, Link. That's not my name. Wait, Link. You're the hero of Hyrule! She always says Link. <laughs> what the heck is Link? Finally! Peace returns to Hyrule! Be is sure to play Zelda Hyrule? Quest! <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Yeah, you're funny. Now you don't mind, I'm gonna take a nap. That makes two of us. Okay, no, no, she'll never wake up! Don't let her sleep! Fuck! God. You had one job, bro. God damn it. Well, there we go! That is Zelda 1. Original quest! Another quest will start from here! No! At least you have a decent end screen here. You can play your second quest, you basically get... You are great and have amazing power with your... with your name and how many times you died. Yep, and I died seven whole times. Yep. Hey, it's less than what I did. <laughs> I guess we can probably just talk about our overall opinions of this game while... Yeah, may as well fucking do that. Cause I'm not doing second quest, screw that. You played it, so go ahead, you go first, you think about it. So, I guess I'm probably spoiled because the first Zelda game I played proper was Link to the Past, and I'm very much spoiled in terms of how that game properly did that, because when I think of ideal top-down Zelda games, it's usually Link to the Past and any game that generally revolves around that. I'm a big fan of the Oracle games, I'm a fan of Link Between Worlds, I haven't played much of, um, what is it? Um... Spirit Tracks, I've played Phantom Hourglass, and looking back, it definitely has its flaws there. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't played Triforce Heroes, so no opinion on that. I mean, I played the multiplayer aspect of it, but not so much the single player aspect of it. Oh, it's worse single player. Easily, I could say that already. <laughs> okay, so I'm not missing much, got it. No, not really. And it, there's also Four Swords Adventure as well, which I never really had the opportunity to properly take Better than out. Triforce Heroes. Yeah. <laughs> but this game, it's a game I respect more than I actually like in terms of NES games because a lot of NES games, I know there's a lot of love for this console, but I feel like there's a very particular set of games that just work more gracefully on the NES compared to others. But I think this is also a case of this is a first of its kind sort of game, so you have to expect the sort of working out the kinks sort of thing. I mean, I'll say this much, I'd still play this over Metroid any day. As yeah. we probably emphasize this, because oh, as much crap cool. as we give this game, it did introduce a lot of different features that are quite nice. It introduced a save feature, introduced a map, despite how primitive it was. It 
was something to work with at the very least, unlike Metroid. Yeah. There was a lot of archaicness, and I know that's built into the game, which is why I didn't feel super bad about having MJ guide me around, because that's the way how this game was sort of designed, because it sort of got people talking outside. Yep, it, it was kind of a thing, like, back in the day with old-school gaming, like, they kind of made it the way they did it to kind of enhance its length. They wanted you to just explore and figure it out on your own. That's kind of how they kind of did their own way of replay value. Or use Nintendo Power, or share, or talk among people. Yeah. Back in the day. Nowadays, we don't really have that anymore because, you know, everything's online. We can just give our fingertips if we really are curious about it. And Which, so, in a way, we're spoiled to a certain extent, and I don't generally like doing that unless I'm really stumped on something. Some games take advantage of that, unfortunately. Like, the only one I can really think of that does that is fucking uh, Ukulele, the Impossible Lair. There's, like, the thing in the overworld, you have to, like, solve some platforming puzzles to unlock some things. And there's the billboard guy that'll give you hints on things. One of the hints is literally... Oh, you don't know where this one is? I'm sure someone on the internet has found it out. That's the hint! Of them essentially... That's the fucking hint! So that's basically them saying, yeah, <laughs> we put an answer on there directly on, by our end. Just yep. to spite you. We literally hid one. Hope Somebody will eventually find it. Once they do, you'll discover it online. Wait, I guess you're not wrong this day and age. It's kind of clever, but it's also kind of a dick move as well. Yeah. Like, did that in a day about the internet? What the fuck would we have even done then? Other than just have to find it ourselves. Yeah. Which, not everybody has the time for that sort of thing. I mean, it also depends on the kind of person, because most people nowadays, a lot of the casual audience will... Uh, maybe I'm being a little bit harsh when I say this, because I don't know how the general public uh, is when it comes to just absorbing information from online sources and stuff like that when it comes to gaming. Right. So that's something I'll just leave up in the air for right now, because I don't know for sure on that front. But, yeah, but in terms of the NES games overall, this is definitely not a game I would see myself wanting to come back to immediately. I can definitely see myself coming back to it, but that's really if I got them better to do compared to some other games, especially from later games in the series, like everything from Link to the Past onward, especially. Yep, it's definitely just a nice rough draft for what would be a big top-down Zelda formula. This is a history lesson... And that's the best way to describe it. If you're, if you're the kind of person who loves the history, this is worth checking out. Otherwise, definitely have a guide on you. If I'd say, if you really want a good starting point, just start from Link to the Past. That's mm -hmm. honestly the good starter position if you're looking for introduction to the top-down Zelda's in particular. Yep. You don't even need a guide for Link to the Past. A lot of it's pretty straightforward, thankfully, for the most part. Yeah. There's a couple of things here and there, but the game's usually pretty good at telling you what you need to do. Yep. In the map even has an order for you how to do everything. Yep. Which is nice. Which this game technically does, but you have to discover it on your own. Yep. Well, there is the nice sense of freedom you have to literally explore, like, on your own path, which, again, Link to the Past will do in the second half of the game. Yeah. Well, I guess last two-thirds, however you want to classify that. It is also a case of, you know... This is just my personal preference, but I'm just more of a guy who likes the linear style of games, just because when yep. you're a good linear game, it stands out a little bit more in my mind because there's a lot more identifiable beats as opposed to just being open, yeah. because when you're too open, it kind of just makes everything blend together. I personally way. prefer a mix of both. Like, I like it when you have like a straight path that basically shows you where you should go, but you can leave yourself room to explore to be able to... Build yourself up more, or discover something that you may not have even needed to do in the main quest, or hell, skip ahead of the main quest even, in some cases, if yeah. done well, which not too many games are great at that with. To be fair, it's either a case of when you try doing that sort of thing, what ends up happening is the game sort of kind of breaks it on itself when you try doing exploits like that. That's just why I'm not super big on the concept that every single game needs to be like this giant open world seamless that you can do whatever the hell you want sort of thing because sometimes when you try to implement that philosophy on every single game it sort of collapses in on itself and sometimes it can sort of kind of make a game lose its identity as a result that's why people are fucking happy for example for like the Metroid series with I know people are apparently upset when they were being told that apparently Metroid Prime 4 is not going to be open world people were like oh man this game's going to suck like what? I don't think Metroid in open world would ever work. Yeah, Metroid open world is never going to work. Metroid, I think we're also speaking more from the 2D angle of things, has always been a strong linear experience. And 
They've done a pretty good job, you know, making exploits and stuff like that. Close, Although your mileage may vary depending on which game you look at. The closest thing we have to a good open world 2D game is probably Hollow Knight. Because that one you can literally just explore whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And you can't complete, I think, the main game without getting any of the abilities. Yeah, I wouldn't know too much about Hollow Knight. The close, the only Metroidvania games I played in recent memory that I really thoroughly enjoy were um, The Messenger. And uh, there's probably a couple of other ones. But I think... I mean, I played Guacamelee 2, and that one's all right, but in terms of just uh, 2D ones, Messenger is usually the one I always point to as one of the facto ones of the recent years. That game is just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's definitely one i got to get to at some point, but... Yeah, my opinion of this game is, well, yeah, I'm not a fan of this one, honestly. <laughs> like, I can will myself through it. I don't absolutely hate it. Like, yeah, it's definitely got its rough edges, but... I've played games that are probably worse. And, well, I... You know, there was a time I liked this more than Link's Awakening. I've changed my thought on that a lot. And yet, part of me wonders if I play this over Phantom Hourglass. I think maybe. The Phantom Hourglass has another problem altogether. But yeah, Phantom Hourglass has different problems with it. But yeah, at least this game's simple enough where... As long as you're willing to overcome the archaic mess that it is, it can be enjoyable. Just, again, you're better off with a guide, knowing where everything is, knowing where to go. It's a lot better than trying to struggle your way through everything. Because the lack of real hints can definitely be a turnoff for people that are trying to, you know, accomplish the tasks in this game. Like, it's... Ugh. It's archaic. Yeah. And most people will probably not play it because of its archaic nature, mm -hmm. because they've been spoiled by a lot of the modern quality of life changes. And yeah, I like the sequel to this game better. And even though that probably has worse problems, but... I mean, I've heard people that actually say that Zelda 2 is their favorite Zelda game. I wouldn't go that far, but I definitely have a, I definitely have a soft spot for it. It's probably in the middle for me. Like, I have no real opinion on it since I haven't played it myself. I probably like it more than Phantom Hourglass, Zelda 1... Debatably, Link's Awakening. Debatably. I'm just trying to. Oracle games that I have to play to actually figure it out, but like, pretty much any of the 3D ones. I don't know, maybe I like it more. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> That's a tough one. I have to think about that. Yeah, because Zelda 2 and Majora's Mask are the only ones that I haven't really played of the more notable ones. But then again, both of those ones are. Major maybe I can actually will myself through Zelda 2, but Majora's Mask, I think it's. I figured out what I finally understand about it that doesn't make that makes me kind of just uh, drive myself away from it. And it's the time limit stuff. Yep, that's what I hated about it too. Thank kind of being forced by the caller to deal with that time limit stuff is just not my thing to deal with. The first cycle can be annoying. That's also a problem. That first cycle can just be awful. Especially if you don't succeed the first cycle. Then you basically have to replay the whole game in the beginning again. If you do not figure out that first cycle. It's dreadful. That time mechanic ruins that game for me. Somebody wants to tell me that hey, it's on me for not paying attention. Like, hey, you want to be the hey, are you, if you want to be the asshole who sits here and um, suffer through that and be my, uh, tell me what it's like to actually suffer through that. If you if yeah. you hit, like when you know what that feels like, then come back to me. Otherwise, I shove it. Yeah, that's another one of those Zelda games that's better as like knowing what to do. It's better as like it's better on a repeat playthrough. Definitely, once you know what you're doing, like figuring out like a ideal way to go through is definitely helpful, but. Yeah, the whole time gimmick can just be really fucking obnoxious. The barrier to entry for that game is just more obnoxious than anything else. Also because the N64 version, your only way for permanent saves is to basically reset the cycle. That's yeah. fun. At least the 3DS version gives you fucking save points that are permanent wherever you go to those fucking owl statues. Like, honestly, with Majora's Mask, I almost wonder if I just want to have someone on the die on standby just so that I can at least get it over with. Because I know somebody will tell me that Maybe I should try and at least put in the effort to play the game blind, but there are certain games where it comes to a point where it's just like, maybe, like I said, I may not even bother playing it all together just because I just don't really have the motivation to want to play that yeah, game. Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely, those that get into it can really appreciate it, but it's definitely an acquired taste, that one, because I've, I used to hate it. It used to be my least favorite 3D Zelda. Now I actually put it above Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and I've it's fighting with Twilight Princess. But I have to play Twilight Princess again, but... 
Then again, I also know you don't have the highest opinion on Twilight Princess compared to me and Coda. It's more of the wolf thing and the whole overworld exploration thing. Mm. Like, that game feels like it's the problem that Breath of the Wild and Twilight Princess had, that Tears of the Kingdom have. Sometimes it's a little too big. Not to their degree, but it's more that overworld exploring that place fucking sucks. Yeah, I mean, I have and to And the play. dungeons are hit or, hit or miss. I'll say at the very least for Twilight Princess, I think the dungeons are the highest point in the entire series, and I'll stand by that. So the boss fights there are fucking incredible. The boss fights are especially incredible. Half of them are, half of them are kind of crap, but half of them are probably the best in the series. Yep. Yeah. The Gandorf fight, the fight with that dragon, the fight with Zant. Eh, probably another one in there somewhere. There's probably a couple of other ones. I like the Stalfos. I forget what it's called. Oh, the Stalfos one of the spinner. Yeah. That one's pretty That was kind of gimmicky, but it was a fun gimmick at least. It was yeah. interesting. Definitely much different, but... I like the Goron one. Yeah, yeah, that was actually pretty good too. It's probably the best of the early bosses. Yeah. I think the water one fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll agree to that And one. the plant one of the Gale Boomerang I kind of didn't like too. The Gale Boomerang one was alright. Yeah. Like but, I said, I have to replay Twilight Princess because it's been years since I played that one. But yeah, that's I the, really do. That's the thing with all these Zelda games. A lot of them will actually feel different enough where everybody can have their own different opinion of them, because, well, I don't think I know anybody that said this would be their favorite Zelda game. And if they do, it has to be someone that's grown up with the NES, because that's uh -huh. the only way that you can convince me otherwise. <sighs> yeah. But, you know, we all have our different opinions. Your favorite Zelda is Link to the Past. Your 3D one's Twilight Princess. My favorite 2D one is Link to the Past. My overall favorite is Wind Waker. You know, our opinions... Are all over the fucking place this series. I mean, it's this Zelda series is kind of like Metroid in a way, where debatably most of the Zelda games have been pretty consistent in terms of their quality. So you can kind of sit here and um, you won't really bat an eye through most of the games because each one of them has their own quirks that make them the strongest in the series for a lot of people. If your favorite the Metroid game is in Super Metroid, you're objectively wrong. Ah, so good, good to know that I've been entirely wrong the entirely, entire time, got it. Oh, wait, that's wrong for me, too. Shit! Because, <laughs> <laughs> wait, yours is um, Prime 1. <laughs> yep. That was technically my first, but uh, it's still a great one. But, yeah, okay, well, either way, it's the end of Zelda 1. And again, beat original quest, you can play second quest. You can already do, you can start second quest from the beginning by entering Zelda as one of the save files. Yep. Now, to say this, beat second quest, the game resets, you can do it again. <laughs> Fun. It just wraps around second quest over and over again. Fun. But yeah, I guess next time when I finally burst down with um, Zelda, I think I'll try my hand at Zelda 2 and see how far I go before I break. Oh boy. I'll definitely say it's not a bad idea to get used to the movement. The jumping and the stabbing, figuring out the motions, how to time everything makes it a lot better. That being said, it can only help a lot. So much. Yeah. I know Zelda 2 is Zelda 2. I'm not looking forward to that. Oh well, that's to that's a tale for another day. So, this is King Sarkoshi. And the MJ 406. Later, people. Yep, see ya.